Good evening. Today is Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. I'm Heather Peffley, Clerk for the City of Manistee. The City Council's August 5th, 2020 regular meeting being conducted remotely, where all members of the City Council are in separate locations and not at the City Hall Council Chambers will be called to order by Mayor Roger Zielinski shortly. As always, this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast on Manistee TV cable channels 189 and 190 and will be available at manisteetv.org. There will be no video associated with this meeting. The microphones of all members of the city council, the city manager, city attorney, and city clerk will always be live unless there is an audio disruption. I will now begin to unmute and check each microphone that will be live during the meeting. Good evening, Council Member Cooper. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Heather. Good evening, Council Member Beaton. Can you hear me? Thank you, Heather. I can. Good evening, Mayor Zielinski. Can you hear me? Yes, Heather. Thank you. Good evening, Council Member Sipsit. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good evening, Councilmember Shemansky. Can you hear me? Good evening, Heather. Yes, I can. Good evening, Mayor Pro, Pro Tem Grabowski. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Heather. Thank you. Good evening, Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, City Manager Thad Taylor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And City Attorney George Saylor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. As a reminder, council members, please clearly state your name before speaking and mute your device when you are not speaking. <laughs> Mayor Zielinski, we are ready to proceed with the meeting. Thank you, Heather. I'll call the meeting to order. Please take the roll. Council Member Cooper. Here. Council Member Beaton. Here. Mayor Zielinski. Here. Council Member Sipsick. Here. Council Member Shemansky. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Here. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. DPW Director. Oh, not done yet. Here. Uh, finance Director. Here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Fire Chief. Here. City Engineer. Here. And I think we have Detective Goodspeed with us this evening. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Roll call's complete. Thank you. Public hearings, we have none. Citizens' comments on agenda-related items. Each person in the waiting, in the virtual waiting room will be called individually by the city clerk by the last four digits of their telephone number. Individuals will be asked if they have a comment or if they are passing. It is very important that those giving comments have a good phone connection and no sound or noise whatsoever in the background. Examples would be like television or all forms of audio. That should be muted. Otherwise, there will be a disruptive audio. If the issue cannot be corrected by the caller, we will move on to the next person in line. We'll now take public comments. The agenda items for those we do not have an agenda are, on the consent agenda, we have approval of minutes, cash balance, revenue and expenses, and notification regarding next work session. Other agenda items are, consideration of ordinance 
to extend the duration of a provisional permit granted under Chapter 866 and provisional license granted under Chapter 867 of the City of Manistee codified ordinance, consideration of Ordinance 20-08 to amend Ordinance 19-03 of the City of Manistee ordinance to provide for the change in Section 1.09 of Ordinance 19 dash 03 regarding the duration of the ordinance to provide for an effective date and to repeal all ordinances in conflict herewith. Consideration of entering into an agreement with IT right for network and information technology consulting and support. Um, the city clerk will now accept, uh, will now take over and accept uh, public comments on agenda items. Telephone number ending in 7775. Do you have a comment? I do. Thank you. My name is Joshua Covert. I'm an attorney and I represent and work with Meds Cafe. Meds Cafe is going forward with a medical provisioning center license currently in Manistee. They expect to be up and running in September. They also have uh, applied or tried to obtain one of the adult use licenses through the city of uh, Manistee. Uh, but currently, I believe they sit past the number of allocated uh, dispensaries for the adult use. And that, um, extending the ordinance of you know 2007, I guess, is a little bit of a concern of ours because we've been pushing forward through COVID and are ready to open up a medical provisioning center which very easily could also be an adult use retail establishment. Uh, and we're ready to go, but by extending the deadline to April, it's gonna make it where we're not gonna be able to move up, you know, to the a number of allocated spots um, if somebody isn't ready to go. Uh, some of these licensed, or I'm not licensed, but some of the properties that you've granted the um, special use variants to, may not still be ready in april and um every every day that goes by that's another day that the city doesn't get the taxes that are generated by having an adult use retail establishment and so you know if this ordinance goes through i would ask the city council to consider allocating more licenses or some other process where meds cafe could be both a medical a provisioning center and an adult use retail establishment. By doing so, we're going to start generating taxes for the city of Manistee right away. Um, within a couple weeks of us being open, if you were to approve them as a retail establishment, we would have the license from the state of Michigan. We uh, have currently licenses under both medical and adult use in the state of Michigan. And, and so really all we'd be waiting for is for the city of Lansing to grant that location to be uh, also licensed as an adult use provisioning center or retail establishment. And we'd, we'd be generating taxes right away. So I just wanted to bring all that to the city council's attention and try to hope and figure out a way that, you know, we can have the Meds Cafe establishment serve both medical and adults. Um, and I think it benefits the city of Manistee if we do that as opposed to waiting until April to see if some of these other places are actually going to get licensed through the state or be ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, there's no number, but member of the public, do you have a comment or do you wish to pass? I, I have a comment. Uh, Please state your name and name, address. My name is Chris Stronick. I live at 309 Fifth Avenue. Uh, and I'm, I'm relatively new to Manistee. Uh, I have a Facebook group called Bring Disc Golf to, uh, to Manistee. And under that Facebook group, we, we'd like to be able to uh, access like our, our Red Sherrick Park uh, to do simple things like an acoustic night at the park uh, where people can come down, set up, uh, enjoy some acoustic music um, from from locals and, and those who would like to come play. And also something I'm curious about is uh, we as a group, uh, Bring Disc Golf to Manistee, would also like to host a movie at the beach. Um, 
we'd like to do Jaws uh, on Saturday, July or August 15th. Uh, we, we have lined up two rentals from uh, Manistee Paddle Sports. Uh, and they're more than willing to come out, uh, rent tubes, give them ammo boosts that they need in this economy. Uh, we've also spoken with the owner of Lake Gulls about uh, adjusting her hours and uh, seeing if she could stay open and, and do popcorn and simple things uh, or whatever she feels comfortable doing. Uh, the only thing we need uh, is uh, city council approval to move forward on that. Uh, thank you for hearing uh, what we've got going on, and I know it's very difficult in these times, but uh, I applaud the city that, that has come together and, and still maintained this, so good job. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Would you please reach out to that person? Yes. Um, uh, if I, I'm sure the city clerk has some contact information. Uh, okay, we'll thank you. Hey, I do not. So I ask that he send me an email or contact me at the office because there's nothing that's showing on the screen. So there was no number. So, okay. Um, thank you, Heather. Yep. Good evening. I, I, apologize. Uh, oh. I apologize. I can call tomorrow with my phone number. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. Do you have a comment to make? I don't have a phone number on this one either. I believe it may be Mr. Hollander. It is. <laughs> Good evening. I'm, I'm doing this on my, uh, on my computer, so um, I'm looking at a blank screen. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a comment to make at this I, time? I, I do. I just want to pass for now, but uh, I'm available to answer any questions uh, later when the um, uh, Hillcrest uh, pilot amendment uh, okay. is discussed. Thank you. Mayor, that is everybody that's waiting. Thank you, Heather. We'll move on to the consent agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Consent agenda items include approval of minutes, cash balance, revenue and expenses, Notification regarding next work session. At this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion? Grabowski, I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll move the second. Mrs. Beaton. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, comments? Please take the roll. Council Member Cooper. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Mayor Zielinski. Yes. Council Member Sipsick. Yes. Council Member Shemansky. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Unfinished business, we have none. Under new business, consideration of ordinance 20-07 to extend the duration of a provisional permit granted under chapter 866 and a provisional license granted under chapter 867 of the City of Manistee, Michigan codified ordinance. The City of Manistee Codified ordinance provides that provisional medical marijuana facility permits and provisional recreational marijuana establishment licenses respectively are valid for a period of one year from the, the issuance and may not be renewed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic and its impacts on the ability to complete construction projects and in the state of Michigan both because of the restrictions imposed by executive order of the Michigan governor and general unavailability of contractors available to perform work. Parties that were issued provisional permits and provisional licenses have been unable to complete construction projects required to obtain final inspection from the state 
and approve an approval of their state of Michigan license. The inability to secure the state license consequently makes it impossible for the, to apply for and obtain final permits and licenses from the city of Manistee within the one year duration of the provisional permit and or provisional license issued by the city because of the construction difficulty encountered by provisional permits and provisional license holders. It is appropriate to extend current issue, currently issued provisional permits and provisional licenses to April 1st, 2021. This extension would only apply to current issued provisional permits and provisional licenses. At this time, as, as a, excuse me, as an ordinance, two separate readings are required. If this ordinance is introduced at this time, it could be adopted at the next regular meeting. At this time, council could take action to introduce ordinance 20-07 to extend the duration of a provisional permit granted under chapter 866 and provisional license granted under chapter 867 of the City of Manistee, Michigan codified ordinances. Is there a motion? Motion by Cooper. Is there a second? Martin Pontiac, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? This is uh, Nick Shemansky. Um, I, I've got a question. When when was the the date that the uh, current ordinance would expire? The the ordinance wouldn't expire. It's just that that we're amending it to allow those. Um, provisional licenses that are uh, set to expire October 24th, 2020, just those have their deadline or their expiration extended to April 1, 2021. So the what? ordinance doesn't expire. We just have, to, we want to amend it. So those that have provisional license now have a little bit extra time to complete their projects uh, due to the, um, different situations presented by the uh, COVID-19. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I guess the question is, how much extra time are we actually giving them? We're giving them roughly five months. What, no, they'd be okay. December, January, February, March, actually four months, excuse me. So the 120 days is what they're at. Right. Yes. Yeah. Just a little over 120 days. Okay. Thank and you. And again, yep. Again, one of the things to consider the uh, one of the effects of the uh, restrictions imposed by the state was that the construction trades were shut down for about uh, six between six and eight weeks. Right. Um, so, so, so is it possible that we do 90 days instead of? Um, four months do it because I, I think in the letter they were asking for 90 to 120 days. Right. And we just, we just looked at the 120. That's the, you know, the, that's the extreme end of their request. And we thought that would give sufficient time for them to complete their, pro, their project. And there might be others out there that are in the same uh, situation. But again, you know, if council wishes to go to 90 days, that's certainly fine too. It's council's, okay. uh, Council's decision. Any other discussion or questions? Any opinion on 90 days versus 120? This is Councilman I Cooper, and I don't understand why it would make a difference between 90 days and 120 days. I think we should give them 120 days. Anybody else? This is Beaton. Um, I think 90 days should be sufficient unless somebody can come forward and tell me why they would need 120 at this point.
Anybody else? Heather, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper. Yes. Councilmember Beaton. Uh, no. Mayor Zelinsky. Yes. Councilmember Sipsick. Yes. Councilmember Shemansky. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. No. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Next, consideration of Ordinance 20 08 to amend Ordinance 19 03 of the City of Manistee Ordinances to provide for a change to Section 1.09 of ordinance 19-03 regarding the duration of the ordinance to provide for an effective date and to repeal all ordinances in conflict herewith. Hollander Development requests an amendment to ordinance 19-03 to allow for the later completion date of the Hillcrest Apartment Housing Development Project. The later completion date is necessary as Hollander Development had to work with their architects and construction company to bring construction costs down and within budget. They are requesting an additional 24 months, 24 month period to complete construction of the project. As an ordinance, two separate readings are required if this ordinance is introduced at this time. It could be adopted at the next regular meeting. At this time, council could take action to introduce ordinance 20-08 to amend ordinance 19-03, extending the project completion date until August 17th, 2022. Is there a motion? This is Shemansky, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? This is Martin Pontiac, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Hollinger, this is uh, Mick Shemansky. Can you explain why you need an additional 24 months? Um, yes, Councilman Shemansky and uh, council members. Uh, I don't believe that um, we're asking for an additional 24 months um, to complete the project. I think what um, my recollection is, is we thought we would be finished by the end of next year, 2021. Um, and so we're effectively asking for probably another six months to a year. Uh, the reason is uh, similar to uh, the last uh, matter on the agenda that you um, discussed. Uh, the, uh, there are a limited number of contractors within the state and trades uh, uh, people within the state who can do multifamily construction, and uh, there's a there's a big backup um, in the uh, jobs uh, that uh, was caused by uh, the COVID virus, um, and as a result of that, um, the the prices uh, have become extremely competitive, and uh, even more so for uh, projects that are located in rural areas that are some distance from. Uh, the places where these general contractors and tradespeople tend to be based. And for example, Grand Rapids would be a, um, the, uh, where the concentration of the trades that are gonna work on uh, Hillcrest are located. Um, so, you know, we have, in addition to there being a backup in terms of available um, uh, contractors, uh, you also have the distance that they have to travel, the fact that um, uh, they'll be working through the winter time, um, and that adds um, uh, costs. It also adds uh, uh, it, it makes it more competitive to get them to, to come to, to Manistee to work. So all of that uh, resulted, plus some over design, um, which I take responsibility for, uh, which resulted in costs that were way over budget. Uh, we've now worked with the architect, completely redesigned um, the main building and uh, made it much more efficient. 
and our contractor has received firm bids from virtually all the um, trades uh, that we need uh, that are within budget. So uh, at the present time, we're finalizing a couple of those um, last minute uh, items, but the project is a go at this point. We've applied and received our soil erosion permit. We applied for our building permit uh, last Friday. Um, and uh, we wouldn't do that unless we felt we were ready to start construction as soon as, uh, as possible. Um, I, I can't give you a, a date when we're going to start, but I can just tell you that our goal is to start within uh, about 10 days from now. Um, that will depend upon a couple of things that we have no control over, one of which is our lender uh, that just asked us uh, yesterday for an updated market study. So they want to know that the need is just as critical today as it was a year ago when we got the allocation of tax credits from the state. Um, it's the nature of nature of the business, and uh, it may take us a while to get that updated market study. Again, something outside of our control, but um, we're spending money. Uh, we wouldn't even be asking for this if we didn't um, think we're you know ready to start construction very shortly. Mr. Hollander. The 24 month period, it, is that is that going to give you, that would give you enough time to complete the project with some uh, room in case something happened? Um, the uh, construction period, yeah, the construction period, Mr. Mayor, is uh, is 15 months from the, from the time we start. Now, if it turns out that our start is delayed um, too long into the fall, we're, um, uh, you know, we haven't started framing. If we can get our concrete in, then in time to start framing uh, before the cold weather sets in, it's possible uh, that the crews can work throughout the winter and we'll have units uh, late next spring, um, starting next spring, and then final completion would be later in the year. If the cold weather comes early or if we get delayed in starting construction so that we're not starting until September, um, uh, the reality is, is that we may get the concrete done, but then we might have to stop until the spring before uh, renewing construction, in which case um, we're probably looking at the end of next year for completion. But the amount of time that we've asked for um, is plenty of time. If we can't do it by then, it's, it's probably um, not a go from the beginning. And uh, so... That's all I can tell you so right are you now. Pretty comfortable? Yeah. Are you pretty comfortable with the 24 months? <clears throat> I am. I mean, and if we start construction and for some reason, you know, things are delayed, um, I mean, the city has been extraordinarily supportive of us and uh, uh, I, I'm not uh, predicting anything, but I, I would not be, un I mean, I'm uncomfortable coming to you right now because obviously we haven't delivered on, on what we originally projected, but uh, things happen, as we all know, and um, uh, this is a community asset. So uh, I believe that there's there's support everywhere for the project, and that support will continue. So if we get a little delay once we start construction and we have to come back and ask for, for help, we'll do it. This is, is there any other? Yes, yeah, this is Beaton. Mm -hmm. I have a few questions. Uh, excuse me. Um, I'm somewhat perplexed because, and maybe this question should be dire directed at uh, City Manager Taylor. Um, I would think that the plans for the Hollander project need to also go before the Planning Commission for approval, do they not? Um, My understanding, I'll let Mr. Hollander. Yeah, respond. I can answer that. When we redesigned okay. the main building, we generally stayed within the same footprint and we reduced the height. We didn't increase the height. Um, and there was, there weren't substantial changes to the site plan. So the staff um, made a determination that because the changes were not major, it was not necessary to go to the planning commission. It could be handled internally. Um, and I think that was a correct decision uh, I'm not just saying that as the developer, because the changes, as it turned out, in terms of what the planning commission would be interested in, were very, very minor. Um, 
essentially the site plan that was approved uh, is, is the one that we're sticking with. We've reduced, eliminated one building, um, reduced the units by five, so we have 45 units instead of 50. But um, you know, we're, we're we're keeping within almost the exact same design, uh, Councilman Beaton. Okay. Um, I, I think I would feel, you know, I, we obviously need this project. I'm going to just make sure that you understand that I feel very strongly about that. But I think I would feel a little bit more comfortable if you would give us some sort of an outline of, you know, if you're going to start construction in 10 days, if you could give us a timeline of when you anticipate work to start and end. Um, because we are waiting and some people are waiting um, with great anxiety to see this happen because we desperately need housing. So um, it would be good if we had some kind of a timeline to accompany this request. Um, I wish we had one. Um, Councilman Beaton. Maybe you could that. Yeah, Councilman Beaton, once we sign our contract with uh, Wolverine Construction, uh, one of the very first things that they do is uh, develop a, a, a timeline for the project. And we'll be happy to share that with you. Okay, and that'll fit well within this 24 months, I anticipate. Yes, as I Maybe say, it's good. a 15 month construction contract. So they have to be finished. Okay. If we started tomorrow, they'd have to be finished by the end of next uh, year or before the end of next year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, Mayor, this is Grubowski. Uh, Joe, I'm, I'm with the same concerns that uh, Councilman Beaton has because, you know, we postponed this once because you were cutting down the buildings and cutting down the height, and now we're getting it in for another postponement. And I'll go with the 15 months, but that's the most I'm going to go for, even though we need this project really bad. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, this is Jermaine. I just I, I just have a quick question. If the, if they only need 15 months to complete this, then it shouldn't really read an additional 24 months, should it? Uh, Mayor, I can address that. Sure. Again, um, we just wanted to provide sufficient time for the project to be be completed. Uh, you know, we're still in the midst of the, this COVID pandemic, and and we don't know with any certainty what's on the horizon. And I would rather give him more than enough time than have to come back and request more. I think it's been obvious uh, by the comments by Mr. Hollander that, you know, he's not, he's not content to sit and wait. And as soon as he gets his, gets things together, he's gonna be moving. I, I, I know I've, I've talked with the building official He's been talking with Mr. Hollander. He's given him authorization to, as soon as he wants to, start um, the footings. So uh, there is a sense of urgency, but again, it's tempered with the unknown of the COVID pandemic and what, uh, you know, what that might play in this whole situation. Okay, I I completely understand that. Like I, we need this housing bad. It's just it keeps getting pushed off and it's already been a year and it doesn't look like anything has been done. So, I mean, I don't, I just feel like people should not be using this pandemic as an excuse to extend things out. Like, I know that's not the, the case here, but it, it keeps being brought up that, you know, there's a pandemic. We would like to see like a timeline of like what's being done and what's going to be done. That's my only concern. If I might add, um, Mr. Mayor and members of the council, uh, you know, among other things, we have nine different sources of financing on this project. Uh, so not only are we faced with the usual complexities that anybody else who's building a project, uh, whether it be residential or commercial is today, um, you know, we have financing, but that means that there are nine separate entities, each which makes independent decisions. Um, my job as a developer, our job as developers is, is we're, orchestra, we're like the, you know, the maestro of the orchestra. We assemble the, uh, the various parts of the orchestra, but we depend upon each one of those parts to be competent, be able to do their work 
um, on a timely basis and, and, and contribute to the, the success of the venture. Uh, whether, whether it be our project or any other project of this complexity that the city considers, um, time deadlines are not within our control. If the city uh, is, is uh, you know, has, has a goal of, of achieving um, adequate affordable housing within the community, uh, they have to be willing to work with the developer and understand the process. And the process is not a simple one. Um, we have, at this point, probably $600,000 invested in this project. Actually, more than that, now that we, we've got completed drawings. Uh, we don't make that kind of commitment without an intent to move forward. Um, and, you know, we've had magnificent support from the community uh, and from the council on this. And uh, I'm, I'm available at any time to talk to any council member who wants to know more about the development process, because I think it's important that the community understand that process, not only for this project, but for the future. So, you know, anybody should feel free to call me. Um, I'm happy to sit down uh, at a distance and, uh, you know, walk you through the process and respond to any, any questions you might have. Anybody else? Um, this is Peyton. I would appreciate if Mr. Hollander could um, give us a, an outline of uh, when things are going to take place on this project, um, sort of like a timeline that we can follow. And then if anything at all happens in that timeline, rather than waiting until the end to try to make up time or whatever, whatever happens, I would like some updates on how we're doing. I, I would just feel more comfortable being able to advise our community if we're meeting the deadline or we have a little glitch here, it's gonna take another couple of weeks or something, rather than waiting until the last minute. I think it's important to be transparent with the people who live in the city of Nancy. Mr. Hollander, is that possible? Certainly. Yes, we will do that. Thank you. Thank you. If there's, is there any other comments? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper. Yes. Councilmember Beaton. Yes. Mayor Zielinski. Yes. Councilmember Sipsick. Yes. Councilmember Shemansky. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Moving on to consideration of entering into an agreement with IT Wright for Network and Informational Information Technology Consulting and Support Services. The city has used IT Wright as a vendor of record to provide IT counseling and support services since 2012. IT Wright has recently reworked and enhanced its service model and approach the city with a proposal to provide additional planning services and a higher level network security, as well as adjust, it, as well as adjust their compensation to better reflect the market. The city is satisfied with the services provided by IT Right, desires the added service, and wishes to continue the relationship. The city attorney has prepared and approved the agreement. At this time, council can take action to approve the agreement with IT Right for network and informational technology consulting and support services, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the agreement. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Grubetsky. This is Shemansky. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I, I've this got is it. Council Member Beaton, and I have just a couple of comments. Um, I would feel more comfortable if, if Ed is in the audience to speak about uh, the different aspects of this contract and and um, how it works with the city. I, on, I honestly have to tell you that IT is not my area of expertise. So whatever information you could give me would be great. Certainly, Council Member Beaton. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. 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 Okay. 
Um, so IT Wright um, has been our contractor for about eight years. Um, they were the predecessor, the successor to a firm called Terrapin IT out of Traverse City, Michigan. And IT Wright is probably the premier um, information technology support service organization for small to medium and maybe even a few larger municipalities in the state of Michigan. They, they service many, many communities, um, Cadillac as an example. Um, I believe they have Ludington um, in, in communities across, uh, across the state. They are very closely uh, aligned with uh, BSNA software, which is also one of the premier software providers for communities across the state, which is a big advantage for us because um, often things come up that, that IT Wright can fix relatively quickly. Um, beyond that, we have a very um, complicated network. All of our facilities are uh, connected either by fiber optics or many are connected wirelessly. So we have literally dozens and dozens of, of devices and radios and routers and switches and antennas that we have to maintain. And um, through our collaboration with IT Wright, we've been able to uh, automate a lot of that process and, and get things on a central dashboard so it's very easy to troubleshoot and do things. Um, when I negotiated the contract back in 2012, we did a full-blown request for proposals and at that time, IT Wright was by far the most qualified and also the most economical. Um, I believe that the second place bidder, uh, let me back, but not the second place bidder, the firm that we had had prior to that when they bid on that contract, I think they bid around $50,000. So we got a very competitive rate back in 2012. And when that first initial contract expired, um, I really did some hard nose negotiating with them to keep that rate low. Um, it was really less than they wanted to pay, but they, you know, they wanted to keep their customer base and, and keep them happy. So when IT Wright approached me in January with some additional services and also some additional uh, security software upgrades, I was very interested to hear what they had to say. And the reason I mention that is one of the things that we're going to be, well, they've actually already implemented it, um, and obviously would roll it back if we didn't uh, come to an agreement. But one of the things that they have is it's software that protects the city from ransomware, which you may have heard about. There's been local municipalities in Michigan, uh, at least two or three that I'm aware of, that have actually fallen prey to that type of attack where they click on something that they shouldn't, and it ends up locking all of their files and encrypting things, and they have to actually pay money to be able to get access to those files. Uh, the software that we have, uh, when it identifies an attack like that happening, it can actually stop it and then roll it back so that you don't have any danger for that. Um, on top of that, there's going to be some additional security training. Uh, but the thing I'm most excited about is this quarterly uh, top-to-bottom stem to stern analysis of over 400 different points to try to align what the city is doing with best practices. We actually went through our first one of those uh, a few weeks ago and, and did fairly well. We have some room for improvement, and, you know, as budget allows, we'll be implementing some of that. But I'm very satisfied with uh, with this contractor. We literally use them every day uh, of, the, of the year. I mean, there's the help desk is very responsive, and we, we could not function as a city without – some type of support services, whether it be IT right or some or somebody else, but we're very satisfied with them. The increase um, is pretty nominal. We had already really budgeted for that. We had anticipated that that was going to come down the pipe. Um, it averages out with all the services that they're providing, including backup services, which are critical, at about fifty dollars per user per month, and that truly is uh, half or even less than half of what uh, a standard contractor might charge, which is more in the neighborhood of 100 to 125. And you might ask why they can do that. Well, they can do that because they are experts in this space and in this market segment, and they leverage remote technology, so they're not sending people out. They do almost all of their work remotely. Although I will mention today we had a, we had a staff member on site uh, fixing a problem that was very critical for the marina. So Everybody uh, in the city is very happy with their services. I think the contract amount, even though it is an increase, is reasonable. We've budgeted for it, and I feel very confident and secure with their services. Um, this is Beaton again. I just want to make a comment. It just seems in the last few months that a lot of, quite a 
not a lot, but there's been an uptick in the amount of emails that are going into quarantine that I have to decide on whether to, you know, to delete them or whether to open them up, et cetera, et cetera. What, this is a very, very um, naive question, I'm sure, but what security do I have in, well, I don't know whether I should open something or not until I actually open it and decide whether I should have. So, I mean, it's a catch-22. So, what security prevents me from getting infected or infecting the whole system at that point? I mean, well, that's, so that's, I mean, that's a that's a great question, Councilmember Beaton, and that's exactly the purpose of. I mean, we have multiple layers of security um, to begin with, but the quarantine that you speak of is a is a relatively new layer, and it, it does algorithms that that review emails and identify ones that are. Um, either exhibit characteristics based on the algorithm or are potentially problematic. And, and frankly, if, if you don't recognize the sender of those emails, you shouldn't be letting them out of quarantine. The quarantine does a very good job. I can count on one hand the number of quarantined emails that I have had that probably might have you know, been able to go through. And you can always then go and tell the quarantine to release those items. But that's layered on top of the security that we also have through Microsoft, which um, we use to host our email. Um, and then we also have antivirus software. So if you happen to click on something and it did launch a virus, the antivirus software hopefully will catch that. Um, so there's multiple layers. We have redundant backups. Um, and we're just trying to do our very best to keep the network uh, efficiently running and not run into any difficulties. All right. Well, you and I have talked about this before. The only problem I have is forwarding pictures that I've taken around the city to my email account that seem to somehow get not go through properly. So, okay. Well, we can we can address that again, Council Member, if you're still having issues. So I'm happy to look at mm -hmm. that with you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council Member Cooper. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Mayor Zelinsky. Yes. Council Member Sipsick. Yes. Council Member Shemansky. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Just a reminder our next Tuesday is our work session. We'll be uh, conducting uh, conversations on local revenue sharing board grant for the uh, Armory Youth Project and anything else that might come before Council. Um, concerns and comments. Citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizens in attendance via phone shall be recognized by the city clerk for comments. Limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be read. Um, Heather, do you want to take over and then move right on to staff and elected officials, if you would? Okay. Telephone number ending in 7775. Do you have a comment? Uh, yes, I, I do, just briefly. I just kind of wanted to reiterate what I talked about earlier in that um, by you know changing the ordinance to allow for other facilities to obtain these licenses isn't going to change really the landscape of the community. Manatee is already going to have a Mets Cafe uh, medical provisioning center we're just asking for an additional license to hang on the wall so we can also serve customers over 21 and generate tax revenue thank you telephone number ending in 3900 do you have a comment yes please state your name and Oops. address ryan fitzsimmons uh 209 saint mary's parkway um uh, I'm uh, an owner in Meds Cafe, um, so also um, soon to be 70 Arthur Street, and I recently closed on um, uh, a parcel in the Light Industrial District, uh, 170 Glocheski. Um, it's a almost 6,000 square foot building um, and almost four acres. Um, um, I wanted to uh, address the council, uh, and obviously uh, our, I wasn't able to hop on earlier, but I know our, our attorney Josh um express some concerns um i would love to set up some some high level talk um with the city to see um you know i, I patiently waited and, and unfortunately and, and i wasn't 
super pleased with the the process um uh, as far as uh, the limiting of the number of licenses that that came in um for for recreational and we got pushed outside of that initial five and we've set things up um so we'll be opening up in september uh, medically and and then we, we knew based on the progress of the other um properties in the in the area that we would have a chance then to get one of those licenses um it's very very hard to survive just uh, medically in in these markets and i've invested a significant sum of money um now into into manistee uh, i'm looking to bring a, a grow facility with nearly 60,000 square feet of grow space um you'll see that um um uh, the the zoning and planning will, will will be getting my site plan um later on this this month uh to get put front and um, there and, and and we're looking at uh, additionally uh, on top of the provisioning center and, and the number of jobs we have going on there the the jobs we would bring uh, for the grow at the 60,000 square foot facility and processing you're you're talking potentially up to eight additional licenses that the city would see uh, to get tax dollars out of the the state pool, um, so I uh, I'd, I'd love to be able to have further discussions either with the city council or or, or Thad, the city manager. I know that um, um, Josh, uh, our attorney, has reached out um, to the city attorney on multiple occasions recently, and hasn't got a response. Um, so it's 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 a little frustrating on uh, on my end, but uh, uh, you know I truly care for Manistee and. I'd love to see these projects go off. I'm I'm looking at um, changing my residence back to to Manistee um, by the end of uh, this year as well to to oversee these projects. Um, uh, and I just think the um, we are ready and, and and funded to bring these jobs and these tax dollars to to the city. And uh, I wish everyone would be uh, open minded and and want to work with me in the same way that I want to benefit the the city of Manistee. Um, um, uh, yeah, I wish there was a way to have some, some back and forth in, in, in discussions. I'm not sure that that's the, the, the case now, but, um, uh, Josh and I will, will look to put a, a letter together to the, the city, um, you know, stating our, uh, our further intents and, um, yeah, would love, would love to find, uh, solutions. It, it just seems that it's in the city's best interest, um, you know, to, to consider these these projects and and finding some uh, solutions for uh, Meds Cafe on the dispensary side, and then the uh, uh, it would be uh, Victorian Reserves is the um, uh, operating company um, for the potential growth there. And, and like I said, I, I closed on that that property uh, a few weeks ago, and um, we're funded to put a new um, 30 foot steel building or um, sorry 10,000 square foot building with 30 foot ceilings. Um, a state-of-the-art grow facility and to start and then look to expand on that almost four acre parcel uh, to have up to you know 60,000 square feet of grow space uh, you're, you're talking you know, the overall project that you know tens of millions of dollars we would invest um, into that um, so yeah I think that's uh, that'll wrap up my part Ho hopefully um, somebody from the city can get back in contact with me the, the next um, few days I know it's hard because not everybody's in or maybe still not in the, the offices, but I'd, I'd appreciate the opportunity. Uh, thank you for your time. City Manager Thad Taylor. Uh, nothing further. City Attorney. Uh, sure, uh, Heather, uh, just so uh, I could pass this on to the fellow who spoke just a little while ago. Um, I'm not aware of any contacts that have been made to me uh, by uh, his attorney, but uh, if the attorney wanted to contact me, I certainly would be willing to speak to him. And uh, not that I have any authority to, to do anything on behalf of the city in that regard, but I'd be happy to speak to him so you can feel free to call me. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Finance Director Ed Bradford. Um, yes, Heather, I just, I just want to uh, thank Council for um, approving the contract with our IT provider. Um, it certainly makes my job a lot easier, and having the continuity um, allows me to focus on, on more financial things because I, I do often get sucked into IT stuff, and having a, a trusted partner at my side makes that a lot easier, so thank you. Any 
Acting uh, Detective Sergeant Goodspeed, do you have anything? Uh, no, I don't. All right, thank you. Fire Chief Bart Cameron, do you have anything? Nothing, Heather, thank you. DPW Director? Nothing tonight. City Engineer? Uh, nothing, Heather, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cooper? Yes, uh, Heather, I got a couple questions for Thad. One is, how many police officers do we have right now on the force? I believe we have 11, um, and they've completed their interviews, and they're going through the, uh, my understanding is going through the uh, final stages of deciding which uh, of the candidates they want to extend conditional offers of employment. And then there'll be 13? Yeah, we plan on hiring two more. Okay, Thad, how many people for, are on the fire department? There's seven. Seven? Is that what they always had? It's my understanding. They, they used to have eight. Uh, now they're, we're at seven. Is there a reason why we went from eight to seven? I don't think there's any specific reason uh, that I'm aware of that we went uh, from eight to seven. Uh, the re we uh, reduced it um, when the, we promoted the uh, promoted f to the fire chief, and it was uh, decided that they could function with the current with their current level of staffing. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Beaton. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all. For the work session next week, um, I have asked Mr. Taylor if he would mind if I added an, uh, an item to the agenda. Um, he did, it's not mentioned in our agenda tonight that it's been added, but just for council's information, I did a comparison of the contracts that were recently approved for Heather and for Jeff and for Ed Bradford, and they each have a 60-day a clause in there where they notify the city that they're leaving. Um, I've asked Mr. Taylor, since he is an important part of our structure, that in the case of retirement, which happens at a certain age and sometimes people delay it and sometimes people take advantage of it, if he would consider amending this contract with the city to 90 days. So I've asked for that to be on the work session. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I would very much like to extend my personal condolences to Roger Zelensky and his wife. Um, they've recently lost a family member and I, I, I feel very strongly that um, I appreciate the fact that you're here tonight and uh, I understand that these are difficult circumstances. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And also a personal favor, Mr. Taylor, if you could reach out to Mark with us and I think he feels like he, you haven't answered his emails um, and uh, that's about as much as I know about it. And if you could reach out to him and maybe talk to him, I think that would be great. That's it. Councilmember Sipsick. Nothing, thank you. Councilmember Shemansky. Nothing at this time, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, first is a statement uh, to Jeff. I want to thank you for getting Princeton and 14th Street done. People are very happy over there that, that finally they can ride on the road. Also, uh, is there any consideration to the city manager for uh, the 9th Street boat ramp, people are calling me that they're trying to put their boats in and the kids are swimming down there. They don't move out of the way. They they uh, just yell and scream at the boaters. And, and uh, can we put up signs, no swimming, or what should we do down there? Because it's not a good situation between the people and the kids. 
Yeah, I, I, the, there's a couple options. I'll I'll talk with the police chief as well as the DPW director and, and uh, try to come up with the best solution. Okay, good. The next thing is, uh, Jeff, how much did it cost for us for that truck to fall through the river walk there? Uh, what did it? Because we had to get a, you had to get a part or something to get it out. And is there quite a uh, thing, or is the insurance paying for this? Uh, this is Director McCula. The um, the damage to the truck was limited to the drive shaft. So we had that repaired for, I believe it was about $400. Um, the cost to have the barge pull it out, uh, there is no cost uh, because we've been working in conjunction with the consumer's contractor throughout the summer and they did it as a favor to us. The, I think we've, we expended uh, a couple days down there backfilling and preparing uh, where it was eroded behind the seawall. And I have not poured concrete back there. I want to make sure that we sealed up the penetration through the wall. So we've taken our couple sections of removable walkway that we use at the beaches and set those across uh, on a temporary basis so we can monitor the sand. And if the sand stays uh, stays put this fall, then we'll report this fall. And I expect probably maybe a thousand dollars in concrete costs. So most of it's just been our our in-house labor. Okay. Uh, my next thing is the Jeff or the city manager, either one. Uh, what is now with First Street? I see some of the bricks fell down on the river walk. Uh, and we can't get insurance on it. So is the wall now considered a dam? I heard that rumor going around. And the walkway is considered a bridge, and that's why we're not covered. Is that true? That's that's the position the uh, insurance company is, is taking. Um, and we, we don't have a lot of options to to push it um i think you know in 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 retrospect i think they um on previous damage complaints they interpreted the policy uh very much in the city's favor and uh now i think they've changed their in, the way that the, the latitude of the interpretation so that's why we bonded to uh, to get sufficient funds to do restoration along the, the river walk and along the uh, shoreline to mitigate the effects of the uh, high water and erosion. Okay, I think that's well I've got tonight. Councilman Grabowski, this is uh, Director McCool. If I can follow up on that. Okay. We've got, we've got plans designed through uh, Spicer for the replacement and repair of that area as long as or as well as going up the river uh quite a ways and then all the way between the boat launch and the stub pier uh the funds to do that work are part of the capital improvement bond that we just sold and we should be submitting uh within a week for our permits and we'll be putting that out for bid and there's a there's a chance that if the bids come in appropriately that we could begin construction this fall. Good. Thanks, Jeff. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. I have nothing. Thank you. And Mayor Zelinski. Thank you, Heather. Would you want to fill us in on the election? How'd it go? You, I'll bet you're tired. <laughs> I am. Um, it went very well. Um, we were we transmitted results to the county shortly after nine o'clock and we had everything wrapped up and delivered to the county by, I think it was about quarter after 10. So things went well. We processed 1,329 absentee ballots and one of the precincts, I can't remember, I don't have in front of me, one was like 168 in-person voters and the other one was like 140 something. So but it went well. Good, good job and thank you for all your hard work. I have nothing further. I have nothing further with, with a motion to adjourn. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion.
have a motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.